Hello, so welcome back to part two of this design series. So in this episode, we're going to add in the like massive header, the design gallery, portfolio, whatever title you want to put, and then the body copy underneath with the nice little boxes and shadows. So let's talk in, let's get on with it. So if we go to the layers panel, and we can just collapse down the header for now, and I think what we'll do is we'll grab these two, and we'll press Control G to group them together, and we'll double click on this and just call it background. So we keep everything, as I've said before, organized because when you have a lot of layers, it does get quite complicated after a while. So I'm going to create a group above. Uh, I'm just going to call this um, intro, something like that. And what we'll do, we'll do create a layer inside of that. And then we'll just minimize that down, press T on the keyboard, and we'll zoom in. Now we want to be adding the uh, like the main heading, so I'm going to change it from Arial and I'm going to change it to Headline 1, which is the font uh, that I used. Now you don't have to use that, you can use whichever one you want. Uh, I would recommend a blocky font like I've done, it just stands out a lot more. So I'm going to click here, I'm, I'm only going to type in the word Design because they're actually two separate layers to do two different effects. And I click OK. Now obviously that's tiny, so we do need to change the font, so I need to go back into that and just select it all and change the font up and the font was roughly about 150 pixels you can see that's changed dramatically and I'm going to put that to about here now obviously the colour for this was different colour as well so I'm going to double click on it to select it and the colour that I used I'm going to type this in so it's CA2F2F like that, so with that still selected, what you want to do is go to your character palette. Now, mine is here. Now, if you don't see it, you want to go to window and turn it on there, which is character. Now, we want to make the spacing in between each letter a bit further apart uh, than what it is at the moment because it's quite squashed together. So, to do that, you want to come to this option here. Um, so, you drop the little arrow down. And at the moment, it's in negative value. I must have changed this in a previous design I was doing but if you come to say plus 50 you'll notice that we have more spacing in between each of the letters now so again we can change it to say 75 just to put a bit of a different look on it so there's the first portion in place so again back to the layers panel and I'm going to create another layer so what I'm going to do I'm going to press T on the keyboard again and I'm going to click next to it and I'm going to type in the word gallery it's the same font so I'm going to select all that, but this time, this is going to be white. And I'm going to go back to my character palette, and I'm going to bring the tracking into zero. Well, in fact, I'm going to bring it into minus 10, like that. And I'm going to put that next to the, the word design. Now, you probably notice that when I move that there, yeah, you've got these little lines popping up. Now, these are called smart guides. So to turn those on, if you go to view, I go to show and turn on smart guides and they do help you out to align things so let's just say I wanted to put that right to the same uh, right to the side of the, the word design I'd click and move it up and you can see the lines come in and when you see three lines like that then you know that's perfectly in line so I'm just going to move that over slightly to the to the last letter of design and um, so that's that portion in place in fact what we do need to do we need to keep everything to the lines so I'm going to select the design and gallery and then just nudge it over so it hits the, the line here. So that's that portion in place. So if we just minimize this and zoom out, so you can see straight away we're starting to get somewhere now. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to add in some of this copy text underneath. So I'm just going to zoom in. So just above the gallery layer, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to just click underneath like that. Now I want to change the font from headline now back to Arial and the size of the font we're going to change to 24 pixels and I'm just going to copy this in from my side again you can put any text you want in this is just some lorem ipsum copy text so I'm just going to paste that in there like that so if I just zoom in in fact if I zoom out a little bit more like that and if I close that down you can see that's in place so we want to line it up towards the end of the line now behind that we want to create like a box so I'm going to grab the uh, rectangle tool, so I'm going to click at the top and click down and looking at that we've still got the width on our box so we want to come up here and then just delete the property out of there 
And then if you just click away, that will select it. So now I'm just going to delete that because we don't want that. So let's try that again. So I'm going to click and drag over it like that. So it's evenly uh, spaced out on the top and the bottom and let go. So obviously we don't want it to be that color. We want it to be a different color. So the color that we want to choose is going to be the following. So I'm going to double click on the white and the color is going to be 2C 2E 3-0 like that and then we just want to move the um, the lorem ipsum sentence up above that layer and that's now put it in place so that's the first one done the the next one in fact what we'll do if we just go back to the move tool and if we just nudge this over slightly and minimize this and if we just turn off the guides so you use control and the semicolon and as you can see that's in place so I'm just going to put the guides back on the next one we're going to put in is going to be the following. So I'm going to copy the text again. So back over here in the layers, we want to create another one above it. And again, I'm going to click just underneath. So I'm just going to paste in the text uh, and click on the move tool to make that selected. And so now that's in place again. We're just going to do the same principle one more time. We're going to grab the rectangle tool and we're going to click and drag around it. Probably make this one a little bit longer just so they're not all... Uh, dead center and then let go on that one and again we need to change the color so we're going to change it to a lighter color just to change the different shades and the color for this one is going to be 4E 5053 and OK on that one and again we want to move the text above it and that's in place so the text isn't quite lining up properly with that so we're going to nudge that like so so we've got that in place. I think the next thing we'll do is add the three more below. And once we've done that, we can add in the shadows. So again, we're going to copy. So I'm going to copy the text again and paste it in. So just above the text layer, I'm going to create another layer. Click and paste that in. So you may have noticed that the text is getting bigger and smaller, and it's also changing colors uh, on the way down and whatnot. It's just to, just to change it up a bit so it's not all standard and uniform. Uh, and I will, I'll will tell you the colors of each one and the font size of each one after I've finished as well. So again, same principle. I'm going to grab the rounded rectangle tool. And because this is quite a thin, uh, sorry, because it's quite a small font, I'm going to create quite a thin uh, slice around it like that. So again, I'm going to change the color. So the color that you want to use is 2C2E30. Click on OK. Move the text above. And that's that one in place. So we'll keep working our way down. So we're going to create another layer and copy the text. So I'm just going to click below it, paste the text in one more time. And if we just zoom out, because that's a bit longer on this one. So what I'm going to do, because there's some on there that I don't actually want, so I'm going to stop the text about here. And then I'm just going to create the box that goes uh, underneath it again. So quite a fairly biggish box like that. And let go. And the color for this one is going to be a slightly different color once again. So it's going to be 4E5053. And OK on that. Shift the text above it. Uh, and that's in place. So I'm just going to nudge the text down with the arrow keys like so. And we've just got one more to do. So again, I'm going to create a layer. And I'm going to grab the text over here. So I'm just going to cl click below and paste that in like so. Just nudge it down slightly. And I think I'll grab the box again and create that around it. And the color for this one is going to be uh, similar to the other one. In fact, I think it's the same color, to be honest. It's 4 E 5053 and then just move the text above one more time so now if we close down the layers panel just zoom out slightly and if I just remove the guides so as you can see with just a few layers and a few bits of text you can see the sort of effects you can get so I'm just going to zoom in and just tell you the different sizes so for the first one the font size was 24 pixels and this is all Arial uh, and the color of the actual font I used was A8A7A7. 
and then the one below that was 28 pixels and the, the color for that is D7, D7, D7. If you go down one more line, this is a bit smaller this time, it was 18 pixels and the color is A8, A7, A7. Coming down a bit more, this, this is a bigger size, this is 34 pixels and the color is A8, A7, A7. And then the final one is 24 pixels and the color is D7, D7, D7. And if you just close down the latest panel, and if you look at that and turn off the guides, you can see how quite quickly now it is the, the design is coming together. So we'll just add in the shadows and then that will be the end of this video. And in the next video, we'll add in the uh, actual gallery images at the bottom. And we'll probably get it finished in a couple of episodes. So it's quite a short series. Uh, and then after this, we'll actually code it all up and get it all to work actual on a web page. So if I'm going to zoom in. So the way I created the actual shadow is that in the following way, if I just zoom out slightly. So you want to click on this background and if you go to the layers and you'll see it's selected. All I did is I duplicated it and I did control T which then brings up free transform and then I just brought it in from the side to about here and then just enter on that. Then I change the color by clicking on the square here just a black and you can see it changes in the background then what you have to do is bring it below the main shape so it's now underneath so what you want to do now is go to filter blur and go to Gaussian blur and just click OK on that then as you can see you can see it's blurred in the background now and you've got the slider here to choose how much blur you actually want on it so I reckon if we put it to about 8 pixels will probably be enough for this and then click on OK. So now if we zoom in, I'm going to turn turn the layer panel off at the moment. So we want to do Control T, which selects the actual uh, shadow. I'm going to right click and go to Warp. Now this gives me the ability to bring the shadow in like this. Now we want to bring it down from the top so we can't see any there. Bring it in slightly from the right hand side and then just make it sort of come down out from behind it so you probably can't see because these lines are in the way at the moment but if I just get it to the general sort of shape and press enter so as you can see it's sort of coming down and it's curving down and then curving up that way and um, so we probably want to bring it in a little bit over here so control T and then right click and go to warp and it's going to bring it in here slightly just so it sort of feathers off like that and press enter so as you can see that's in place so what I would do then is go back to the layers panel make sure you've still got the shadow selected here and just bring the opacity down a bit just so it's a bit more subtle and not so in your face like that so now if we zoom out you can see what that sort of effect is now done to that shape and it's giving it a whole new meaning and depth to it so if I was to turn that shadow off you can see the difference straight away so with that one complete, we can pretty much copy and paste it to the next one. So I'm going to call this shadow, like that. Now we just need to figure out which layer this one is. So it's number 5. So I'm going to click on shadow, duplicate it, and then just drop it underneath number 5 like that. And then I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge this one down, nudge it across, and put it in place like that underneath number five and as you can see now we've got the shadows underneath which makes it look completely different now and far better looking than what we previously had so if I just close down the layers panel you can see now the designs coming together quite nicely with all the shadows and all the different effects the actual gradient here we're going to man manipulate later on once we've added the other images in so that's it for part two as usual guys thanks for watching please leave any comments below feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video